how that develops with the court case. All right. This was an interview by Thinking Crypto, who uh, did a great job. Shout out to you, Tony, again, man. Really great job on this. I want to play you a couple important clips here from uh, David Schwartz's comments asked about, can central banks and JP Morgan, as example, use these private side chains? Listen to this really quickly. Would a central bank be able to test a CBDC on a side chain? Would a likes of a JP Morgan be able to issue like a JPM coin like they did with Quorum on, on a side chain and test it out? And, and would it be private? And I know I, I, this is a loaded question. Yeah, they could certainly do that. Uh, uh, there, uh, there, uh, uh oh, there you go. Right there. Right. Yes, they could certainly do that. And he goes on to dig down into that deeper and it's all great. And I'm skipping over incredible stuff. But I just want to take you to the next thing, which I believe will become the key to getting a four and five digit XRP. And I believe David Schwartz is going to tell you what that is right now private the federal reserve side chain and the, the russian central bank side chain is private how, how would that all work and how does xrp fit within that well obviously nobody can force either of those entities to do anything that they right. don't want to do i would love to say oh they're going to have to use like xrp as there anybody else but the other lesson that i've learned being in this business for a decade is you can't force your customers to do the things that you want them to do because you won't have any customers like this is a big leap in everything and like if we try to say oh you're going to get what you want but you also have to do, it's, it's it's never going to happen like building this system is, is going to have to to some extent be its own reward but what's probably going to happen what i foresee is that these things are going to start out as as walled gardens mm -hmm. the you know if the federal reserve built the federal reserve is probably not going to be a first mover here you know that's going to be smaller countries that are more willing to experiment and have less existing infrastructure that they would need to change over and um they'll build these systems as walled gardens and they'll heavily control them and what will happen is people who are on both sides of the walled garden will be able to monetize the fact that they're on both sides of the walled garden. So if you're on a public blockchain and you're also inside this central bank system, you can facilitate people's payments to and from between those two ecosystems. And it will be your risk and your effort and you'll charge a fee for that. And customers won't get the greatest experience, but it'll be pretty good. And what my hope is, is that once uh, central banks start to get confidence that the system is working the way it's designed to, and they have, they'll have an appetite to sort of, they'll have a butt, big red button they can push to knock the walls down. Right. And when they reach the point where the walls, they, they don't see them doing any good, they'll knock them down. But I think what's going to happen in the short term is going to be the liquidity will come from the same conventional sources. So in the U.S., you're and there you hear it right there. I mean, he's laying it down for you. And I mean, this is it, ladies and gentlemen. He's telling you what it is. You want four and five digit XRP? You're going to need that central banking system to knock down that walled garden, those intermediaries that are in between this transaction currently, right? And remember, this is a phase-in model, as Dilip Rao told us back in 2018, and nothing's changed about that. First, it's the software. Get them using the software when they're comfortable with that. Then get them looking at XRP and then using some transactions there. And then ultimately get them to hold XRP and use it, right? All right, listen to this real here. Do I want to use XRP? So instead of the German bank holding Turkish Lira, they could say, Akbank, uh, are you able to accept XRP and give me Turkish Lira? Here's 100 Lira worth of XRP. Here's a million lira worth of XRP. Mm -hmm. And instantly that can be settled without having to hold balances. So that's, that's the, the holy grail. That's the ultimate end goal that we're aiming for. But if you don't have connectivity, you, know, you, you can't even start. And Ripple has been building the market infrastructure for years. Brad Garlinghouse even refers to Ripple as a blockchain infrastructure company. That means you're building the blockchain infrastructure for all of this stuff to even work on. So first you get the banks connected. They do what they're doing today better. They like it. They build new services on it. Then they go, I want to do this in 100 countries, but I can't hold currencies in 100 countries. Well, guess what? You got XRP.
But that's the way, you know, banking works. It's a phase strategy, and that's the way banking works. And at some point, you get them to hit that big red button. They take this wall down, and they put XRP right in the middle. And that bank doesn't have to hold hundreds of currencies all around the world. They can simply hold XRP and exchange the value denominated in XRP to represent that currency that that other bank receiving it wants to get. And then they can convert that XRP to that currency they wanted in the beginning. So this is where we are. To me, this is the moment I'm waiting for is a red button moment. People refer to it as a flip to switch. That is what we're waiting for. And they tell you that the model that Ripple has been doing with their software and the asset and the ledger is a phase in model. And we're not there yet. And we know for a fact we need regulatory clarity in order to get there to push that button. That's going to do it for me, guys and girls. Before I get out of here, I do want to remind you, Unstoppable Domain. Look at this, guys. Well, thank you for having me on here, JP. I'm thrilled to be here from sunny California. A lot happening in the world at the moment. And yes, I recently uh, joined the uh, in April, thrilled to, to do that. Uh, for me, you know, the concept of cryptocurrency has been out there for a while, and it, it took, for me, a legitimate path of utility that convinced me to join. So, uh, as you know, you know, the crypto is in use wally, but for me, the, the XRP's role in facilitating cross-border payments very quickly, I think provides an application that is much at the moment. It comes from the tailor. We can see this again. Remember this. We all know, but still pay insufficient attention to the frightening scenario of a comprehensive cyber attack, which would bring to a complete halt to the power supply transportation, hospital services, our society as a whole. The COVID-19 crisis would be seen in this respect as a small disturbance in comparison to a major cyber attack. Born Gekko Sido, they building up the narrative for we know what's coming. What do we see here from WSJ? Biden warns on cyber attacks oh the cyber attacks we wonder we wonder we wonder this so comes from crypto kendra your true potential vc experimentation as you guys can see digital currency central bank digital currencies if you go down here from van der hmm looks like xrp in their official demo of a settlement look at that guys xrp official this is official again more adoption more innovations taking place as we speak we want what more proof do you need Again, look at this, guys. Look at the connections right here. The M the demo of sending XRP via iOS iMessages. Hmm. If you go here, Ripple Apple Partners. Apple Pay integrated Ripple inter interledger technology already. In April 2018, last year, which was a few years ago, news emerged about a significant partnership between Apple Inc. and Ripple, an alliance that was said to be destined to assist Ripple's default currency, XRP. Beautiful guys, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Again, remember what Ripple's doing. As you can see right here, so number one. with this environmentally sustainable agenda. Now look at this part right here, a global approach. The bigger picture actually extends far beyond each country's borders. Notice how they're talking about this global bigger picture. The digital money revolution will happen on a global scale, family. This is why I say we must focus on what's going on around the globe. Not just locally, globally. We global, baby. The IMF says the lower costs of obtaining, storing, 
and spending digital money could make it easier for people and companies to substitute their domestic currency with a more stable currency, especially in countries with high inflation and volatile exchange rates. The IMF says digital money would also likely increase gross capital flows as transaction costs diminish and financial products become more widely available. This is the future we're moving into family. Digital money could be leveraged to foster integration and interoperability of payment systems. New solutions must be explored. Notice how they say must. They must be explored such as multilateral settlement and exchange platforms, as well as common norms or principles for the design of digital money. Get this to facilitate cross border payments. Why do you think Ripple is focusing so much on cross border payments? This is why. Why do you think XRP keeps getting brought up in all of these documents from these supranational organizations? This is why. Why do you think we keep hearing about how XRP has the capability to bridge these CBDCs? for cross-border payments. This is why. And the IMF goes on to say, such as remittance flows, which are essential for many lower income countries. Look at where Ripple has been positioning itself for the past few years. Look at how much growth we have seen how much adoption we are seeing. Look at how fast we are moving into a digital world. The IMF will play a key role in the new era of digital money. The organization was created to promote international monetary cooperation and oversee the stability of the international monetary system, as well as contribute to countries' economic and financial stability. Digital money must be regulated designed and provided in a way that allows countries to maintain control over monetary policy, financial conditions, capital account openness, and foreign exchange regimes. Payment systems must grow increasingly integrated, not fragmented, and must work to help all countries guard against a digital divide. This is the way the world is moving family. We are seeing the adoption of this new era of digital money. But notice how these central banks have to reiterate 